let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. You are sure to ask me, before I proceed, what I mean by personalism. Now, my meaning will emerge clearly enough uh, in the course of these lectures, but perhaps I should say something right now uh, so as to help us get oriented. So the personalists with whom I keep company hold that each of us exists as a subject, not just as an object. In other words, as someone and not as something. Or in still other words, as self-determining and not just determined. They hold that a human person does not just exist to provide an instance of the humankind, but exists as this unrepeatable person, and so stands in a sense above the humankind, being always more than just an instance of it. Personalists have a keen sense of the mystery of the interiority of each person, in virtue of which each always exceeds the finite qualities and properties that he or she displays. Personalists are keenly aware of the inviolability of persons. That is, they understand deeply why it is that none of us is ever rightly used or destroyed for the good of others. They are perhaps more sensitive than their ancestors to all the forms of coercion that threaten our personhood. They reject the ancient distinction between Greek and barbarian, and they know that the birthright of a person belongs not just to a select few, but to every human being. Personalists also have a distinctive understanding of social life. They say that we can no longer live in the archaic solidarity that was natural in earlier times, thus we can no longer share the religious faith of our group merely out of loyalty to the group. As person, each of us acts in his or her own name in making the basic commitments of one's life. Now, it may seem to follow from this that personalism is just another species of individualism and is sure to bring severe social fragmentation in its wake. But most personalists, and again, the ones I keep company with, the ones I'm going to align Newman with, um, have been very sensitive to the sterility of individualism. They've taken very seriously the interpersonal relations in which human persons live and move and have their being. Personalists refuse to think about social life only in terms of rights and of protection against intruders. They think of it mainly in terms of solidarity and co-responsibility. Now, personalists think that this sense of personal existence that they try to express philosophically has been awakening among people in the last couple of centuries and that this awakening is an epical event in humanity, a sea change in the way we understand ourselves. Now, what I want to show in these lectures is that Newman is a significant voice in this epical event. He gives expressions to some of the deepest insights that are found in this rising personalism. 